Hey guys, I'm Desiree, your head gardener here at Growing Spaces, and I'm here talking with Andrew today about the benefits of vermiculture using a sub pod in our grow domes. So the reason I really love sub pod is the ease of use. It's very user friendly. Um, it lets people uh, who might be on the fence about composting get started uh, because it's so easy to install and use. Um, the product is easy to set up to install and the instructions are right on the lid as we saw when we installed it, um, which kind of takes the guesswork out of it. And there's also a huge community on social media, Facebook, Instagram. Um, they have their own subpod grow hub online where you can, you know, post pictures, ask questions. So it's very, <clears throat> it's a very tight knit community um, of vermicomposters. So Andrew, what are some of the benefits of vermiculture? Uh, so the reason I like to vermicompost um, is the uh, benefits that the worm castings provide to your soil. So it provides aeration, it provides nutrition, um, and water retention, which is all good for growing plants. Um, you can harvest the castings, you can spread it throughout your dome. Uh, the reason I like Subpod is because it's actually an in-ground composter. Um, there's no real mess, there's no smells, uh, it's really easy to use. You add your scraps, um, you can compost in an active sub pod about 20 pounds a week. Uh, so, you know, being in the dome, when you're doing all your pruning, you can just take those prunings or cuttings and throw them right into the sub pod and the worms are going to uh, take that organic matter and create nutrient dense castings that you can use throughout your garden. Um, you can harvest the castings and make worm tea um, that will benefit your, your garden even further. So what would you say about somebody who's worried about losing space in their dome? When you're thinking about a space in your dome to install your sub pod, um, a lot of people get concerned like, oh, this is going to take up a lot of space. You know, I only have so much space in my dome. Um, but I truly believe uh, the benefits outweigh the space that it's going to take up. Um, when choosing your space, you want to um, put it in a shaded area where it's getting afternoon sun. Uh, you don't want it, you know, you don't want the sun blaring down on it um, because uh, you want the sub pod to be protected. It's going to, you know, just extend the life of the sub pod and your worms. Um, I like to install mine uh, close to the pond on the north wall, uh, either northeast or northwest. Uh, that's where we installed two sub pods um, over at the Pine River Shares Dome in Bayfield. Um, and like I said, we installed two sub pods in there just because the benefits uh, of the sub pod and vermiculture and the castings um, are just so valuable. Some of the key features of sub pod um, are the holes that are on all four sides. Um, that allow the worms to travel in and out of the sub pod. I call them free range worms. Um, so when the worms are comfortable and you're feeding them, they're gonna, you know, travel in your sub pod. They're gonna do their thing, eating, breaking down that, that organic matter. Um, if you do add anything such as citrus, um, which can be sometimes harmful to worms, uh, that's why you want to kind of take it easy when you are adding any sort of citrus. Um, but the benefit of the sub pod is the other microbes that are in the sub pod are going to break down that citrus and then the worms are eventually going to come back and start um, to help the decomposition process as well and turn that into castings. So that's what's so cool about the sub pod is the worms can, like I said, travel in and out. Um, they're going to go where they're comfortable. If they're too hot, they're going to go low. If they're too cold, they're going to come up. Um, if it's too wet, they can travel out. Um, I've only added water initially when I soak that bedding. Um, I've never moistened or wet down any of the, the scraps. Uh, usually when you're adding organic matter scraps from the kitchen from any produce, um, it's going to have plenty of moisture. Um, in the in the produce itself so there's no need to ever really water down your sub pod so to your point that added water retention to the soil is really going to help our customers who want to use less water 
to that point of water retention. Uh, you know, Growing Spaces has domes all throughout the states and throughout the world. Um, a lot are in arid uh, places. Um, right here in Southwest Colorado, uh, we don't get a lot of moisture, so we need to um, just be aware of that. And the castings provide that uh, water retention um, for your soil, so you don't have to water as much and you can be more aware of your water usage. So what are some of the things we should avoid putting in the sub pod? So you don't want to add any like trash, obviously, plastics. Uh, cigarette butts, um, anything that is gonna, you know, harm the worms. Uh, you don't want to put really any like grease. Um, not you can add meat, um, but if it's you know just like a little bit left on the bone, you can throw it in there. Uh, there are people that have asked, you know, what about bears? What about critters? Um, with my experience, I have my sub pod actually outside on the north side of my dome and I compost everything from, you know, meat on the bone to eggshells to fruit. Uh, and I've never had any, you know, critters get into my sub pod. Um, and the reason behind that is, is because the sub pod is in the ground um, and it's a aerobic environment. So when you have a aerobic environment and you have that carbon and nitrogen and you're aerating it um, with the cool corkscrew aerator that comes with sub pod, uh, you're not going to get those smells. It's when the compost becomes anaerobic is when it starts producing those smells and will attract critters. So, um, yeah. So how often can we add scraps to the sub pod and when should we be harvesting our worm castings? The reason I love the sub pod uh, being a part of the growing dome um, environment, actually installing it inside your dome is because for that exact reason you can compost 365 days a year um, in an active sub pod you can compost about 20 pounds of food scraps a week uh, as you know um, those food scraps might look really full in the sub pod when you're adding it but the worms are going to do their job breaking that uh, organic matter down um, so you can add like i said about 20 pounds a week you want to harvest um, basically uh, when your castings are finished. So you'll know they're finished um, by the look of it and the smell of it. So the, all that organic matter, you'll dig through your top layers of um, organic matter. Uh, usually kind of on the corners is where your best worm castings will be. <coughs> Sorry, will be. Um, and you just harvest those castings and it'll look and smell like soil. So um, that's a good uh, way to know when your, when your sub pod uh, castings are ready. Um, a cool way to harvest uh, is to stop feeding one side of your bin um, and then just keep feeding the other side. So left or right, you just choose one, um, stop feeding one, feed the other, and the worms will eventually migrate over to the food on the opposite side, um, that way there's less worms to kind of sift through. So what would you say are the differences between a sub pod in the dome versus outside composting? A lot of people think that you can't uh, vermicompost outside during the winter. Um, from my experience, you totally can. Uh, here in Southwest Colorado, we get a lot of snow, you know, two, three feet of snow sometimes. Um, and my worms have always been uh, really happy. Uh, the tip or a trick that I use is to get three to five uh, cups of coffee grounds and basically all you do is you dig out a little well um, inside one of the bins and you just throw that whole chunk of coffee grounds down into uh, the sub pod you bury it a little bit and because it's high in nitrogen it's going to act as a furnace so um, you can basically just picture a fireplace a furnace right in the middle of your sub pod and the worms are just gonna kind of travel um, around that furnace. You know, as it heats up, they might, you know, go a little further. As it cools down, they're gonna get a little closer. Um, and you can just add to that as needed. So what's great about the sub pod, um, like I said before, you can compost about 20 pounds a week. Um, basically all you do is you add your, your scraps. Um, 
but you also want to add a carbon source. So um, dry leaves, straw, shredded paper, cardboard, and you want to do like a 50-50 ratio. Um, I never really measure, you know, it's not an exact science, which is why it's so easy. Um, you just want to make sure you add a little bit of carbon every time, and also uh, you want to aerate. So you want to use your corkscrew um, that comes with subpod, or you can use a shovel, you can use your hand, a pitchfork. Um, I like using my hands just because I like, you know, I like the feel and touch of soil. Um, it's good for your soul. I hope you enjoyed the subpod install and information that we've uh, gone over today. If you are interested in a subpod, you can go check out their website at subpod.com. They're also on social media, Instagram and Facebook. Or you can reach out to me, Green Thumb Daddy, um, on Instagram or Facebook as well. I'm happy to answer any questions um, throughout your vermicomposting journey. Uh, and you can check out this promo code um, for a special discount through Subpod.